Absurd security Cement subway overruns way sharpener delivery China's base economy Asian reaches games. a critical turning point, and Beijing is left with only three major options. Public critiques soar during booming golden week, lying, no money to spend. Netizens mocked the pre-made meals and revealed the prices of the meals served at CCP officials' canteens. Nucleic acid giant Zhang Hezizuan's involvement in prepared dishes attracts attention. A video about CCP monks fight with each other's has gone viral. It's all covered in today's China Truths. Kunming subway overruns wage arrears, China's economy reaches a critical turning point, and Beijing is left with only three major options. After several public transportation companies in various Chinese cities went on strike due to unpaid salaries, a scandal involving over a thousand unpaid frontline employees' wages has surfaced in the Kunming subway system over the past two days. China's economy is teetering on the brink. In detail, the official Kunming subway account has been flooded with posts from employees demanding their overdue salaries in the last two weeks. Among over 1,000 employees who have not paid, some have gone without pay for up to 10 months, rendering them unable to afford medical insurance, and some are even struggling to put food on the table. An anonymous employee of the Kunming subway company spoke to domestic media, disclosing that after all the necessary deductions from their salary, they were left with 5,200 yuan per month, approximately 711 US dollars and 19 cents. They haven't received any payment since May of this year. The individual said, the entire subway company has over 5,000 employees, not counting labor dispatch workers, and the company discourages employees from speaking out about this issue. Based on this number of employees, the deficit in employee wages alone could be over 100 million yuan. The employee also mentioned that pursuing labor arbitration hasn't been effective because the company simply doesn't have the money. Many employees have chosen to resign, but the Human Resources Department hasn't approved their requests. For frontline employees, even having a meal has become a problem, and if nobody works, subway services will be disrupted. The employee provided two screenshots to the media. The first screenshot, dated July 30, primarily discusses efforts by the rail group and the operating company to resolve financial problems but mentions that the debt optimization plan hasn't received approval from various banks. The second screenshot, dated August 4, states that the originally planned bank loans for this week haven't been finalized, and due to insufficient funds, salaries cannot be paid this week. Kunming Subway Company, as a state-owned enterprise, astonishingly couldn't pay its employees for an extended period. This reveals serious problems in China's economy. Furthermore, not long ago, we've reported that Tianjin's public transportation system was also accused of failing to pay salaries for several months. Observers suggest that if public transportation companies can't pay their employees and civil servants are also experiencing substantial pay reductions, it indicates that the income of individuals reliant on government finances is declining. If the Chinese economy doesn't show signs of improvement, it may eventually lead to salary cuts for even the police force, which could have a significant impact on the stability of the Chinese Communist Party's rule. Regarding the trajectory of the Chinese economy, financial self-media personality Lao Man mentioned in an article on the 25th of this month that August marked a crucial turning point in China's economic data. The government's monthly fiscal public budget revenue saw a significant decline, not only failing to grow compared to the same period last year but also decreasing by 60 billion yuan, approximately 8.2 billion US dollars. Lao Man stated that this would undeniably deliver a severe blow to the Chinese economy. With both tax revenue and income from land sales decreasing simultaneously, government fiscal revenue is likely to enter a long-term contraction phase starting from August onwards, which means that government cash flow is likely to be severely affected. So, what are the available options? Lao Man answers this question by presenting three possibilities for the authorities. The first is to passively accept the situation, letting cash flow disruptions occur, local government debts balloon, local civil servants go unpaid, and even the police system struggle to function, resulting in widespread societal disorder. The second option is to continue printing money without a solid anchor, causing rampant inflation. Essentially, this would repeat the old pattern of issuing fiat currency, ultimately leading to economic collapse and considerable suffering for the population. 
The third option, as outlined by the commentator, is the one that everyone dreads, war. Initiating a comprehensive war would demand such massive resource consumption that the entire country's economic machinery would need to operate at maximum capacity. As for how Beijing will choose to respond, we will soon find out. Public critiques soar during booming golden week, lying, no money to spend. In China, there is a holiday known as Golden Week, which combines two significant celebrations, National Day on October 1 and the Mid-Autumn Festival, usually occurring in September or early October according to the lunar calendar. During Golden Week, numerous Chinese individuals seize the opportunity to travel and enjoy quality time with their families. It's also a period when businesses, particularly those in the tourism sector, witness a substantial increase in their earnings. This year's Golden Week holiday in China lasts for eight consecutive days, marking the first extended holiday for Chinese people since the outbreak of the COVID-19 pandemic. Official predictions suggest that the number of both outbound and domestic travelers during this Golden Week will be about five times higher than during the Labor Day holiday. Caixin Magazine has even suggested that this year's Mid-Autumn Festival and National Day holiday may become the hottest Golden Week in history. However, it seems that the reality is far from the predictions of the CCP government. Ms. Ding, a resident of Wuhan, mentioned in an interview with Radio Free Asia on the 26th that many of her friends are struggling due to reduced income and a lack of job opportunities, making it impossible for them to afford traveling. She said, I don't have the money anyway, and my business isn't doing well. Many shops are closed now because they can't sustain their operations and have gone out of business. Where would the money come from? I can't listen to what they, state media, are saying. According to my friends around me, they don't have money. Furthermore, a lawyer named Mr. Gao in Guangzhou mentioned that the current economic downturn has hit various industries hard, and even department stores have very few customers. Mr. Gao believes that the official statements are misleading, this is definitely misleading. We can clearly feel that the economy is in very bad shape in China. Because I often book tickets online, there are not many tickets available online, and they are particularly hard to buy. But to say it's surpassing 2019, that's impossible. People are saving money wherever they can, including myself. If I can take a train instead of a plane, I will do it. On Weibo, some netizens are complaining that they don't receive overtime pay during regular working days, and now they are being asked to spend money. They question where all this extra money is supposed to come from. Mr. Guo, a resident of Beijing, said, I understand that many places, including Guangzhou, Kunming, and Dali, have very sluggish tourism. The salaries of civil servants have been reduced, including a 40% cut in teacher salaries. In Guangzhou, if a high school teacher's monthly salary, for example, was over 10,000 yuan and it's cut by 40%, traveling becomes a luxury. Mr. Guo also added that many Beijing residents can't afford to take taxis anymore, and many have switched to ride-sharing options. For example, this person has been laid off, but he has an idle car. People arrange shared rides through appointments. Netizens mocked the pre-made meals and revealed the prices of the meals served at CCP officials' canteens. In a recent development that has ignited public outrage, the Chinese Communist Party has mandated the inclusion of prepackaged meals in school cafeterias, which are criticized for their lack of nutritional value and excessive use of additives. The issue gained widespread attention when netizens shared images showcasing sumptuous dishes at remarkably low prices in official CCP canteens, drawing a sharp contrast to the school meals. Photos circulating online purportedly reveal the interior of one such government canteen, underscoring the richness of the menu. These canteens not only boast the use of fresh ingredients but also offer their fare at significantly lower prices. Remarkably, all items are uniformly priced at 0.8 yuan per serving for meat dishes and 0.2 yuan per serving for vegetarian options. The prices for other staples like porridge, steamed buns, and eggs hover around the 0.2 yuan, about $0.027, mark. This glaring disparity has prompted online users to mockly question the need for prepackaged school meals at such prices. Comments such as why should we settle for prepackaged meals when even officials enjoy more economical options, and perhaps officials deserve an extra meal or two, have been prevalent among netizens. 
The situation has also prompted calls for standardizing meals across government institutions nationwide, including those served to primary school students. In addition to the ongoing debate about official canteen prices, recent videos featuring South Korean and Japanese reporters praising the culinary offerings at the Hangzhou Asian Games have generated ridicule from Chinese netizens. The videos showcase the vast and delectable array of over 200 dishes available at the Asian Games restaurant, with claims that patrons could enjoy a hearty meal for less than 20 yuan, about $2.74. Netizens responded with sarcastic comments like, please introduce this concept nationwide, let's extend this to schools, and we're ready to foot the bill. Some even pondered whether they and their children could indeed dine for a mere 20 yuan. Before these developments, an unsettling video depicting the opulent fare served to the offspring of officials at a government kindergarten in Zhaojiang District, Taizhou City, Zhujiang Province, surfaced online. This revelation further fueled public discontent regarding the mandatory introduction of prepackaged meals into schools by the authorities. It's worth noting that as early as March 2021, some netizens shared photos capturing the cost of vegetables at the government canteen in Shanghai's Huangpu district. The video in question gives a comprehensive look at the pricing structure of multiple items offered in the canteen, with prices ranging from 0.25 yuan to 3 yuan per item. When this video surfaced, Mr. Wang from Shanghai, speaking to the Epic Times, speculated that the footage might have been recorded during a visit for a virus vaccination appointment. Subsequently, the individual responsible for capturing the video was detained and faced allegations of revealing state secrets. Dong Guangping, a public welfare activist, shared his perspective with the Epic Times, condemning the Communist Party's actions as he stated, You know, I am not well disposed to them, and you can't speak ill of them. If you do, you'll be accused of leaking state secrets. What the Communist Party deems secrets are often the truths concealed from the outside world. Nucleic acid giant Zhang Hezizuan's involvement in prepared dishes attracts attention. Continuing the topic of prepared dishes, the surge in interest can be primarily attributed to the efforts of Zhang Hezi, the founder of Nucleus Gene Technology Company who is widely recognized as the nucleic acid king due to his involvement in nucleic acid testing operations across various regions during the COVID-19 pandemic. Zhang Hezi has taken a significant step by dissolving his existing company and simultaneously launching a new venture focused on prepared dishes. This venture aims to create an integrated supply chain for prepared dishes, spanning from agricultural production through processing, storage, transportation, and ultimately sales. This move has garnered substantial external scrutiny. According to information provided by Mainland Blue Whale Finance on September 23, Zhang Hezi's newly founded company dedicated to prepared vegetables is known as Wuhan Hezi Agricultural Technology Company. Established on May 22 with a registered capital of 5 million yuan, the legal representative of this company is Liao Lei. It's noteworthy that Shenzhen Nucleus Gene Technology Company wholly owns this entity, and the ultimate controller of Shenzhen Nucleus Gene is Zhang Hezi himself. As of now, the company does not have an official website or listed telephone contact information. However, its registered address coincides with that of Wuhan Nucleus Huashi Medical Testing Laboratory Company, another wholly owned subsidiary of Shenzhen Nucleus Gene. In line with a report from Beijing Business Daily, Wuhan Nucleus Agriculture has sought trademark registration for a text and graphic mark named Jiogui Sheng. This trademark falls under the International Classification for Convenience Food. The designated services encompass a range of products, including instant rice, rice noodles, cereal-based items, freeze-dried foods primarily derived from rice, snacks composed of rice or cereals, uncooked rice paste for food production, and edible aromatics. Wuhan Nucleus Agriculture's recent series of actions has sparked market speculation regarding the intersection of prepared dishes and nuclear gene technology. As of the time of this report, nuclear gene has not issued any statements in response to these developments. According to the Prepared Vegetable Industry Development Report, the prepared vegetable market in China is projected to reach 419.6 billion yuan, about $57.391 billion, 
in 2022 and is anticipated to grow to 510 billion yuan, about $69.756 billion, in 2023, eventually crossing the trillion yuan milestone in 2026. CCTV previously disclosed that by the end of 2022, approximately 64,000 companies were involved in the prepared vegetable sector in China. Surveys indicate that the current adoption rate of prepared dishes in China stands between 10% and 15%, indicating substantial room for expansion. The prepared vegetable industry is structured into three segments, upstream providers of prepared vegetable raw materials, primarily focused on basic agricultural products, midstream manufacturers of prepared vegetables, and downstream sales channels for prepared vegetables. As per the report, Zhang Hezi's strategic intent becomes evident as he seeks to establish control over the entire supply chain for prepared vegetables through his agricultural technology company. In response to this development, a concerned mother from Shandong province shared her perspective with NTDTV, asserting that no parent would willingly serve pre-prepared dishes to their children. She raised concerns that similar to the mandatory nucleic acid testing during the epidemic, the government might impose prepared dishes on campuses, which she deemed plausible due to perceived corruption within the government. Additionally, she expressed apprehension, drawing parallels with Zhang Hezi's involvement in fraudulent nucleic acid activities. Since establishing his company in 2012, Zhang Hezi has continually expanded his presence in the field of genetic testing. In 2022 alone, he registered 16 new nucleic acid testing companies. During the earlier stages of the pandemic, the CCP mandated nucleic acid testing for the population. According to historical data, Shenzhen Nuclear Gene Technology Company, often referred to as Nuclear Gene, claimed to have conducted nucleic acid tests on a staggering 700 million individuals during the COVID-19 pandemic. However, subsequent revelations have exposed multiple instances of wrongdoing in their nucleic acid testing operations. For instance, between 2020 and 2022, one of Nucleus Gene's subsidiaries, Jinan Huashi, faced allegations of falsifying nucleic acid test results. In this case, a salesperson prematurely reported negative results for all tests, even before the samples had been examined. Furthermore, Changsha Nucleus Huashi Medical Testing Company was accused of deploying non-health technicians to perform medical and health-related tasks. Additionally, a subsidiary of Nucleus Gene, Lanshao Nucleus Huashi Laboratory, mistakenly categorized individuals with positive infections as negative cases, among other reported incidents. Remarkably, the ensuing penalties amounted to just over 70,000 yuan, about $9,574. This report has ignited a heightened public outcry on the internet. Many individuals are worried about food safety, questioning, if nucleic acids can be counterfeited, how can we ensure the safety of our food? Others are scrutinizing Zhang Hezi's apparent influence, pondering why he remains untouched by controversy and continues to thrive. A video about CCP monks' fight with each other's has gone viral. A viral video circulating on the Chinese social media platform Weibo has captured a perplexing and unexpected scene within the serene confines of a Buddhist temple. In the eight-second clip, a monk dressed in a blue shirt is seen aggressively confronting a naked man, initiating a startling brawl. The altercation escalates swiftly as other monks, donned in traditional cassocks, rush in to join the fray. Adding to the chaos, one of the individuals involved, suspected to be a monk, even wields a bench as a potential weapon against his fellow monk in blue attire. Overwhelmed and outnumbered, the monk in blue ultimately succumbs to the brawl. Amidst the bedlam, a monk brandishing Buddhist prayer beads, suspected to be the temple's abbot, ruthlessly kicks the fallen monk in the back multiple times. The stark contrast between this heated altercation and the tranquil backdrop of Buddhist chants and music within the temple further adds to the bewilderment. Netizens found themselves pondering the extraordinary spectacle of monks, typically associated with meditation and adherence to precepts, engaging in such an uncharacteristic scuffle within the hallowed confines of a Buddhist temple. In response, Netizens humorously remarked, likening the altercation to the legendary Shaolin Temple's 18 bronze men formation and quipping about the consequences of offending the abbot.
The video's virality has sparked intrigue, though the exact cause behind this unusual clash among monks remains shrouded in mystery, leaving netizens both amused and baffled. Don't forget to leave a comment in the section below to share your opinions on today's topic with us. Make sure to like and subscribe to see more interesting topics from China Truths.